I think that this is a look. What the fuck did I just read? <laughs> Hey, what's up? I'm Ali, and welcome back to my channel. I am, yeah, I'm, I'm, this is a reading vlog, but it's also a kind of a pack with me, or get ready to pack with me, or something like that kind of vlog. Basically, I'm getting ready to head out to Vegas for a weekend. Can I help you? Did you feel the need to be in the, sh in the shot? reading my two most anticipated the top two most anticipated reads of this year what 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 do you want you're just staring at me and you're giving me a little bit of stage fright right now what are the books you say the maidens and survive the night now maidens i looked at it and it should only take me about four hours to finish the audiobook which feels too totally doable especially because I plan on listening while I do a bunch of stuff today and all of that good stuff and hopefully I'll take you along for the ride. It's also a reading vlog. This is a reading vlog. We're going to read my most anticipated releases. So now that I'm looking at it, The Maiden's really, I mean it's really not, I mean I don't know this is an average size book so the fact that I can finish this in four hours, I mean it is only about 300 pages so well I normally read about an hour, 100 pages an hour, so that I could probably read it more if I physically read it, or quicker. But who got time for that? Not I. I am sitting outside now, so you might hear some stuff happening. Oh, my allergies just hit. I am 25% through the, what the hell am I reading again? I was gonna say Silent Patient, but that's not it. The Maidens. I'm exactly 25% through right now, and um, I mean, I feel like I've read a lot of stories that start out this way. There's a lot of backstory to the main woman that we're following, and all I can hope is that it actually means something to the story, and we've also been introduced to a lot of sketchy characters um obviously the blame is being put towards one character right now so i'm interested to see if that's going to stay because it's not really a mystery then just more of like why the murder happened and for, for a little more clarification we are following a therapist and her niece calls her because she thinks that um her roommate and friend has been murdered and they turn on the news and a body has been found and they're kind of uh, investigating who, and there's all kinds of different stories happening, so we're going to see how this goes. And now I'm just kind of tired, and I am getting, I got my second cup of coffee for the day. It is like 2 o'clock now. I'm going to lay in my hammock, I'm going to listen to my book, and I think I'm going to play some Animal Crossing and some Cozy Grove. What's my mug? Hey, hi. Hello again. Okay, it is Sunday now, and I just finished wrapping a whole slew of books, and I need to get all these books on my bookshelf in the places that they need to be. I've been kind of holding off on this. Um, it didn't really take that long. I think I was just because I had spent so much time wrapping before, I was kind of dreading it, but honestly, it didn't take that long, and it was kind of therapeutic. I got to listen to an audiobook, so oh yeah, I gotta update you on the maidens. And I had to put those on. I just thought I'd bring you along for the ride. Then um I'm going to stream these here. Oh well that doesn't work very well. These here are all the books that need to go on my shelves. Great, can't wait.
try to film without the camera on. Oh my god. Hello! Okay! I need to work on, do not rub against that. I need to work on actually packing my suitcase. I meant to do it over the weekend. That's why I could ensure that I know that I have everything and have time to go get anything I might be missing. But I just didn't get around to it. I did do my nails. You want to see those? There's little smiley faces. Um, gems on my middle fingers. And then these are cow print ones here to go with my cow print cowboy hat. Which I plan on taking. I don't know how I'm going to fit this in anything. But I plan on taking this. And I plan on wearing this with these pink sunglasses. Oh my god, this is a look! I plan on wearing this hot pink bikini with it. I think that this is a look. You know, I thought the glasses were going to be more pink. They looked a lot more pink online. I got several different uh, glasses, sunglasses to wear. I'm really, really excited to wear these ones. Oh my god, styling. Put my hair down. Get that going and just be absolutely, oh my hair is a hot mess, but absolutely styling is how I feel about these glasses. These ones I think are just going to be like my all the time basic ones. These ones are just normal sunglasses. And then I have this pair, which I also thought were nice because sometimes I don't like the super reflective ones, especially like when I'm trying to hang out with people. I want them to know that I'm like looking at them and talking to them. I only like the really reflective ones when I'm people watching. But I thought these ones were pretty nice because they are tinted, but not like a super in your face. Got this new purse to take because it is quite small but it's durable it will match everything and it's cute i got a little something on the front already um but this is just really cute and an absolute must that's green absolute must uh these ones are just like the walmart brand which uh study found these were some of the best and they actually come with these little keychains so i think that will be helpful audiobook oh i have to update y'all about the maidens okay let me tell y'all about the maidens let me just tell you all so I am 50% in uh, to the maidens and I gotta say I'm not like super impressed yet I'm kind of confused honestly because obviously at the beginning you're told that it is the professor and right now we're still kind of on that but I feel like it's not and we're definitely going after this as if it is him but even all the characters are like why are you going so hard at this character and it's like I'm also thinking that like what and who are all these other side characters I feel like we've been introduced to so many side characters and also like everyone wants to date the main character not enough imp information has been provided for anyone to guess which is a pet peeve of mine like at least give me some breadcrumbs, but I'm not too sure if we've gotten any yet. So, there's that. I'm gonna throw on something. To hey, get out of there. Get out of there. What are you doing? So, that's where I'm at with the maidens. That's how I feel. That's what's happening. So that's, yeah. That's how I'm feeling. I'll let you know I'm gonna listen to a little bit more of the maidens while I pack. And we'll see how that goes. Hey, listen, I hope you're ready because tonight is gonna be big. Everyone's gonna be there. I'm gonna need you to be all smiles. Think you can do that for me? They say happy is a state of mind Like a front porch swing Pretty thing hanging over the riptide won't push away from a nosedive Dark city's all I want in view Gonna spend the day in Gotham, pay my face 
Saints laugh aloud to convince you Good for a moment or two Okay, I realized this morning as I was doing my wrap up and was talking about the maidens, I never updated you that I finished this book and was so upset. <laughs> um, I don't think this comes as a shocker to literally anyone because I don't think I've seen anyone actually thoroughly enjoy this because this it has a really bad plot twist. It has a really bad, bad plot twist. It uses mental illness as a plot twist and um it did have some red herrings i do remember kind of guessing at this at the beginning but there's been some red herrings along the way that have kind of led me to believe other things but then there is another layer to the twist that is just like gross icky mm, no thank you so and i i do expect some level of nastiness when it comes to dark academia but this was just like a, a layer of just like really inappropriate in my opinion and it didn't fit with the story and I just um I feel like we were going for a really big shock factor and it didn't actually matter about the story. I do think that the letters were interesting there's letters in between us that are kind of like um from the killer's perspective but at the once we had the reveal I was like I yeah, like it doesn't make sense it just doesn't make sense so I like I do think the writing is fine it's just like why? Why is that the direction you decided to go? Mm. And I am a little nervous because I did start Riley Sager's next one and I'm a little nervous it's gonna have a similar type plot twist that relies heavily on mental illness. What is this? What are my authors doing? What is happening? I'm giving this a three. Um, that might have been generous. I don't remember like hating this experience of reading this. But it was just like mostly the end of this just really disappointed me. The writing was okay. I don't think it was really dark academia. The secret society is a not so secret. And like there wasn't a whole lot really actually happening within the school. I don't know. It was, you know, whatever. I'm disappointed. I, I don't know if I'm going to keep it at a three. But for now it's kind of what I'm what I have it as. And then Riley Sager's Survive the Night. I am probably about halfway through that already. I started yesterday while I was doing some stuff around the house and whatnot and I'll probably do that again. I probably won't get to it till tomorrow. I'll probably finish it tomorrow. So far I am nervous. I am nervous. I will say I was expecting much more intensity up to this point but I haven't noticed like it hasn't dragged or anything. I was just expecting I think more 
basically this this girl is at school her best friend is murdered and there's like some really specific things about the case that they think is involved with the serial killer and so she is headed home she just needs some time to herself he ends up getting a ride through right this ride share thing on campus and getting this ride from this total stranger and as she's in the car with this total stranger he's doing some weird things that are making her weirded out she's weirded out she's suspicious and he it makes some comments that make her think that he might not be who he says he is and she is pretty nervous about this so yeah we're about halfway through she's really just starting to we, there was a good many chapters where it's just kind of her talking about her life at, at campus and talking about her best friend and a little bit of what happened with that and also like her boyfriend so I have some thoughts on that and I think I kind of know where this is going to go, but I don't, you know, we'll see. I'm second guessing myself now. I always do this. I, th I think I know. And then I second guess myself. We get to the car and things are just kind of awkward. It's whatever. Um, things are happening. But the suspense is taking a really long time to build. But I will say, because it's taking so long, I'm feeling it. I am feeling that suspense. I did think that it would have happened more quickly than this, but I am feeling it. I'm starting to get a little tense and I, I really want to know what's going to happen. The thing isn't necessarily that it is involving mental illness. Mental illness is a really big part of psychological thrillers. I think anyone going into that kind of knows that that's kind of a staple of the genre, which unfortunately is not always great because they don't showcase certain mental illnesses in the best lighting or with the most understanding um but this I, I I don't know I'm just a little nervous that so many of them are just choosing to use that as like I don't know an escape in an evilness instead of like looking at this at a more complex angle and actually re recognizing human nature and how mental illnesses actually work so I'm a little nervous I'm a little nervous I'm a little nervous I'm nervous I am currently listening to Survive the Night. Some weird things are happening. Some things that I kind of suspected were going to happen are happening. But I did get a package from Penguin Random House. And I thought I would open it and we would see what it is together. So, all right. Ooh, shiny. Oh, yes. Oh, my gosh. It's the Corpse Queen. I'm so excited. Look at this cover. Don't do my face. Look at this cover. Oh my god, this is so lovely. It's got a shovel, a bloody shovel in a coffin. Comes out. Oh, this comes out in September. So like this is coming out. Uh, for girls like 17 year old Molly Green, opportunities are few and far between and none especially good. So when the church orphanage abruptly sends her away to live with a mysterious aunt after the death of her best friend, Molly assumes the worst. The truth is even harder to comprehend. Not only is her aunt Ava real, she is exceedingly wealthy, having built a fortune in the dark and illicit business of robbing graves and selling the corpses to medical schools. Willing to share it all for a price. But if Molly wants more, and she does, the price is even higher. As news breaks of a murderer loose in the city, perhaps the same madman that killed her friend, Molly's fight to rise in this insular and overwhelming male society soon becomes a deadly dance. It is seductive, tauntingly told feminist mystery um, set in the 1850s Philadelphia, where to be a body in life or death is a risky business. Oh, this sounds so good. How many pages is this? Holy cow. Oh my god, this just looks so good. Oh, there's even like um some distressing on the chapter pages. Oh, on just some of the pages in general. It looks like there are some ma'am, can you not? There's some like distressing features. the fuck did I just read? <laughs> I don't mean in like that the story 
was like weird. Just like, wh why? Why? I just finished Survive the Night and based on like the title, I would have thought it was going to be a bit more of a thriller. Actually, I thought it was going to be pretty similar to, well, what's that? End road, a road, end, end, exit, no exit. <laughs> that was, oh, my brain was working in overtime there. I thought it was going to be very much like no exit and no exit is very much just a thriller. It is just like you learn the mystery early on and then it's like literally about a woman trying to survive the night. And that's kind of what I was expecting here. Because in the synopsis, it's like, oh, she, there's murders happening and she takes a ride from a stranger. This obviously does not take place in modern times because no one has cell phones. And I thought it was going to be extremely action-packed. Um, we don't get action until pfft, it was at least the last uh, like hour and a half of the audio. I don't know what that would that would have been like the last 150 pages about probably in the book. So there's a good or a good amount of you know time until we get into the good steps that I was expecting. I saw exactly where the story was going right off the bat. Right off the bat, I already knew exactly how this story was going to turn out. And even the red herrings that are placed within the book did not convince me otherwise. There was only probably one point where I was like, oh, 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 <laughs> so, okay, I guess. But I didn't trust it. And then, oh, uh, things just, things took some really weird turns. They took some weird turns and the red herrings were bad. They were just bad, honestly. The things that were thrown in there were just bad. What the fuck is happening? This doesn't even make any sense. Like, none of this makes sense. And then the author has to go back and explain exactly what was going through their mind to make it make sense. And I think that means that your story is not that good. If you have to explain, like, word for word, the thought process of your characters, not once, not twice, but, like, three times within the story... It's it's probably not that good. It should have, the reader should have already been able to tell most of it themselves. Okay, they should have put the pieces together. You shouldn't have to spell it out for them. And being Riley Sager, I would have thought Riley Sager would have known that. I mean, he has written best-selling mystery thrillers. I've enjoyed pretty much all of them up to this point. Riley Sager is going incredibly downhill for me at this point. Like, we're on a fast track to, to rock bottom here. Like, they've just progressively gotten worse for me. And this one, like, this one wasn't necessarily bad, bad. Like, it was okay. You, you had me kind of in the middle. Kind of in the middle. I was kind of, I was kind of got, you know. Um, there was some interesting things happening. I just wanted to see how it played out. And I was like, okay. But... I think if I were to listen back to this story, knowing, I mean, as I said, I knew how it was going to end, like, right off the bat. I already knew. What can you know? So, I already knew, but, like, I, if I think I went back and reread this, I still don't think it would make any fucking sense. Just genuinely do not. Like, the the dots do not connect. And then that end. what the hell was that ending? What the hell was that ending? Mm, I'm just feeling a lot of things. I know. So here's the thing. My emotions tend to be pretty. When I do these vlogs, my emotions in my review tend to be geared towards the last portion of a book, which then can kind of skew the actual review of which I am doing because it doesn't necessarily look at the book as a whole. So know that my passion and my annoyance of this book comes from like the last half of it. And not necessarily the book as a whole. Because I was, like, enjoying myself. I was I was a little nervous. But, like, I just, I'm, I'm just upset. I'm just upset. I apparently don't know my taste anymore. I thought I did. I thought I did. And all my most anticipated releases for this year have been shit. They've been shit. They've been not good. 
they uh, like have I just overhyped myself is it just not the year for me for reading like I don't know what's happening but like none of my anticipated releases are good this year no one trusts any of my future anticipated releases apparently because they just apparently were not good. I will say a weight has been lifted off of my shoulders because now I continue can continue with some of the other vlogs that I need to work on. This is one that I've been <laughs> working on for like three months now. I think right now I'm aiming towards giving Survive the Night a three stars. I think I also gave The Maidens three stars. These are both books that upon finishing, like, it's been a while since I read The Maidens and I've already pretty much forgotten it. And something tells me Survive the Night's probably also going to fall into that category. That tends to be the case with a lot of three stars for me. It's like they were enjoyable while I read them, but not very memorable. And I do feel like this is going to be another one that is like that. The only reason I could think that it will stay in my mind is because it's probably going in my most disappointing books of the year video at the end of the year so it will be it will stay on my radar simply for that and then once that video is over I probably won't think about it ever again. I don't plan on owning it especially because this cover differs from Riley Sager's other covers and I love Riley Sager's other colors like the mono uh the monochromatic type scheme that's going on. I always love those and I was excited to see what this cover color was going to be and I thought it was just going to be all orange. So I was upset that it looks like literally every other thriller out there. I was just mm, not happy. Pet peeve. That's just a pet peeve. My, oh my god, look at my background. Oh, you look magical back there. Oh my god, look magical. Anyway, that is really it for this vlog. Uh, what have we learned? We have learned that I cannot be trusted when it comes to choosing anticipated releases. We have learned that you can't always trust your favorite authors to deliver. Apparently, everyone has a bad day. I get it. I don't expect to love everyone's books. And this just proved that. So, <laughs> oh god, that was a very loud laugh for no reason. That was not even funny. This vlog took incredibly too long to do. Anyway, I hope you all have liked this video. Let me know what some of your most anticipated releases have been this year and whether or not they have lived up to your own personal hype. Uh, yeah. Don't forget to subscribe to see future reading vlogs from me. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.